So, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in India for a five-day high-level trip. But this trip of uh, Prime Minister Trudeau has largely flown under the radar and has been pretty underwhelming so far. Why is that the case? We're going to talk about it today on the show. My name is Sham Sharma. Welcome to the Sham Sharma Show. Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome to another edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate you. So, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is in India on a five-day tour where he is expected to meet with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and talk about increasing trade and increasing cultural exchange between the two countries. However, this trip so far has pretty much flown under the radar for most Indians and most Canadians as well. And it's been a pretty underwhelming trip for the Prime Minister Trudeau so far. In fact, there's been a couple of key differences in between some recent visits by some other world leaders and Mr. Trudeau's visit as well. Recently, when the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu came and visited India, Prime Minister Modi himself went to the airport to receive him. Even when American President Obama came to India, Prime Minister Modi went to the airport to receive him personally. However, when Prime Minister Trudeau, who is the Prime Minister of a country that India considers a very key ally, by the way, when he came to India, he was actually not greeted by Prime Minister Modi. He was greeted by the Minister of State for Agriculture, Gajendra Singh. Also, after he came to India, he went to Agra to go see the Taj Mahal with his family. And even there, there was no Yogi Adityanath, who is the chief minister of Uttar Pradesh, to receive him. So people are wondering, why has Prime Minister Trudeau been snubbed by Narendra Modi so far? Why was he snubbed by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath when he visited Agra? And one of the prime reasons I believe why this has happened is because of Prime Minister Trudeau's soft stance on Khalistani elements within Canada. Now, the presence of Khalistani element and the support that the Khalistani elements enjoy in certain sections in Canada has long been an issue between India and Canada. And Trudeau is seen as someone who has a particularly soft stance when it comes to these Khalistani elements. In 2016, Trudeau was present at a Nagar Kirtan which prominently displayed Khalistani flags and which also had pictures of Khalistani terrorist Jarnail Singh Bhindranwale. In the same year, Prime Minister Trudeau also attended a Khalsa Day celebration which had events which glorified Sikh militancy. In fact, there are also three members of Trudeau's cabinet, Harjit Sajjan, Navdeep Bains, and Amarjit Sohi, who have alleged links to Khalistani movement and who have also seen as having a soft stance on Khalistani elements within Canada. Khalistani and this Khalistani movement has seen a resurgence of sorts in Canada and has been enjoying some strong support, like I said, in certain sections of Canadian society. And also some Khalistani elements are talking about a organizing a Punjab independence referendum in 2020. And my answer to that is, yes, yeah, it's, it's not going to happen because that is not how the world works. You can wish for it as much as you want, but that is not how the world works because Punjab is as much a part of India as Kerala is, as Madhya Pradesh is, as Bihar is, or as any other state in India is. You can wish for it, sure, go ahead, but it's not going to happen. I can wish for pizzas to rain down upon my head from the sky, but that's not going to happen because that's not how the world works. In fact, these Khalistani separatists and these Khalistani elements are actually responsible for the worst terror attack in Canada's history. In 1985, the bombing of Flight 182 of Air India was planned and executed from Canada. Now, even though this Khalistani separatist and these Khalistani people enjoy support in certain sections in Canada, in India, thankfully, it is not as big of a problem as it used to be uh, couple of decades ago. And, you know, credit has to go to the successive governments that have been in Punjab as well. They've taken this issue very seriously. And as much as I don't like the Congress party, but I have to give credit where credit is due to Captain Amrinder Singh, who is the chief minister of Punjab from Congress. He has always had a very strong stance on this whole Khalistani issue. And he's always had a very strong stance against Khalistanis. In fact, when Canada's defense minister, Harjit Sajjan, who is allegedly supposed to have links with the Khalistani movement, when he visited India, Captain Namrinder Singh categorically refused to meet him because of those links. And I have a lot of respect for him for sticking to his guns like that. And I hear a rebuttal of this and a lot of people are saying, well, this might not be something you agree with and this might not be something that the Indian government likes, but this is still freedom of expression and Sikhs are free to hold these rallies in Canada and organize these events in Canada as they like. 
And yes, I agree that this is a freedom of expression issues. And if you want to organize these rallies, you can. But here's the caveat that when somebody like Trudeau, who is the prime minister of Canada and people from his cabinet are seen at these events that glorify Sikh militancy and that glorify this Khalistani separatist movement, that adds legitimacy to this event. That gives a impression that these events have the support and approval of the government. And I'm completely willing to accept the fact that the government does not approve of these things, but when the prime minister of the country goes to these events, it does send a very bad message. Imagine if Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Canada and went to Quebec separatist events, where there were those Quebec separatist flags everywhere. Obviously, it would piss a lot of people in Canada off, and obviously it would piss the Canadian government off. And that would be completely reasonable and completely deserved. And that is why the people in India, and that is why the government of India feels the way it does about Trudeau's soft stance towards these Khalistanis. So that is my gripe about the issue, that is what I think about the issue, and that is why I think that Trudeau is getting the cold shoulder from the Indian government so far. I want to put this question out to you as well. What do you think is the reason behind the underwhelming reception of Prime Minister Trudeau in India? Where do you stand when it comes to his stance on the whole Khalistani issue and his soft stance on the Khalistani elements within Canada? I'd love to know your opinions. Please get involved in the comment section below. All right, guys, that's today's show. I will see you again for Friday's episode. Make sure if you like today's episode to give this episode a thumbs up, to tell people about the show, to tell as many people as you can to come and watch today's episode and the show. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe down below. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching. You can follow me right here and I will see you on Friday. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.